Okay, hello, welcome. So this is going to be a video um, showing how to operate the Soundscaper, which is a new program that I just completed, or the V1 of it I just completed in Max MSP. So when you, if you go to my website, www.taylorbrookmusic.com, uh, you'll find under projects, a link to a page for Soundscaper and you can download um, a zip file that will open up and look exactly like what you see here and it will work for PC and Mac uh, equally well. Um, and you'll have uh, to put the folder in either your Mac's MSP folder or your Mac's folder um, or you'll need to add it to your file preferences um, in Max, if you go to options, file preferences, you can add it to your file path there. All right, so if you launch the Soundscaper, it will come up and it will look like a mess. And you'll need to switch to presentation mode for it to look decent. There we go. Um, and from here, you'll see a README with some uh, instructions on how to get it running. The only dependencies it has are, are of course, it runs in Max. It's not a standalone application. Uh, and it was created in Max 8.3. Um, it perhaps works in earlier versions of 8, but at least Max 8 you'll need. And then um, it uses the Flucoma objects quite heavily, and specifically Flucoma 1.0 or more recent. Uh, they changed it quite a bit at 1.0. And then there are also some custom-made objects that I created, um, fix a typo while I do this, um, that are packed into those files uh, that I showed earlier. So um, basically what this program does is it generates um, more or less unrealistic soundscapes um, from ambient recordings. So there's a recording of a beach, a recording of a park, a recording of some woods and birds in the woods, some waves, a stream, um, and some sort of ambient voices, a street with traffic, all around the Victoria um, and Salt Spring Island area of Canada. So if we select ADC, it'll take my microphone input and you can see it's working here. It's detecting onsets. There are four different types of onsets that it's detecting. If we open up this, we can see that those are novelty slice, amplitude slice, onset slice, and transient slice. So these are all Flacoma um, slicing or, or onset objects. And you can change how they're reacting uh, here. And this, this will, Basically, the more onsets it's detecting, um, the more action you'll often have with the different settings, um, as in the more sort of uh, sound, sound file samples that will be triggered. Um, but you can change these yourself and store values. So if, for instance, with one microphone, it's working very differently than another, you can store the presets of the microphones, or you can uh, also run uh, the input from a sound file, and you can store those there as well if you change them up. Um, and then you have different modes. So if you want to just turn on your microphone and have it make some sound for you, all you need to do is hit the auto mode and it will start generating sounds. So even it's reacting to me speaking right now and it will sort of move quasi randomly, um, but also analyzing the incoming sound uh, and reacting to it. Right now it's sort of just producing waves and sampling the park a little bit, but here's some ambient voices coming in. And the longer I wait, the more it'll sort of move to different things. And if I was singing or making noisy sounds or playing inharmonic sounds with the sound file or, or whatever, it would react a little bit differently. All right, so I'll turn that off. Um, and then there are two different manual modes. The first one will look like this. Again, presentation mode is what you want and you can sort of turn on and off the behaviors that are um, available or that are switched between when the auto mode is turned on, but you can just control them manually. So you just wanna have waves all the time. It will do that. 
the in the wave sound file i think there's like a dog running by at one point so that's what you heard when i first played it and there it is again um you know all these the continuous ones sort of ignore the input and then you have more reactive ones combinations of different things um things that react to pitch specifically so if i turn on traffic ooh, it's sort of trying to follow along with a chroma uh, a little bit with the traffic samples um so there's the manual controls and then there's a more detailed set of manual controls here. And this is where you can get uh, basically access to all the different um, uh, KD trees to do sort of a K nearest operation between what it's the programs here in live and what um, and sort of the nearest closest match in the sound file and along different uh, uh, types of analyses. So there's chroma, which is in this case, it's sort of 19 different chroma per octave. So you can think of these as pitch classes, if that's a more familiar term for you. Um, so an A is an A is an A is an A, no matter what octave is it in. It is in. Uh, and so here you see park using chroma analysis, and the slices are 200 milliseconds long. And so we could have it so with onsets, or let's do amp slice will be the most active. So if I turn this on, every onset, the amp slice, um, object detects, it will trigger a, it will try to sort of match uh, that and play back the nearest sample to what it's hearing live. Da, 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 ch -ch 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 da, da. See, it's very short. And so it's on its own. It's not all that interesting maybe, but you can combine it with other things or you can have it sort of banging out regularly at hundred milliseconds. Ch Hello, is it working? Yeah, so it's such a short slice and it's so quiet here. There, you can hear it now. Ooh. So there's not a lot of pitch content in that uh, sound file. So the chroma is maybe less interesting than Mel bands or uh, MFCCs. Uh, but in any case, oh, yeah. Um, you sort of have access to all those different things at different grain sizes. Um, so again, if we use the same park recording and we bang out every 750 milliseconds using the Mel band analysis, it might sound like this. So you heard as I sort of held that note, it was its K nearest was that, that dog barking thing. And when I did the ch, it, it, the K nearest found a, uh, um, a bike going by. Okay. So you can sort of find all of those, turn them on and off, combine them, and then save them as a preset. So if I were to say, I want to have, um, the stream sort of going continuously and I wanted to have maybe also, I'll turn that up a little bit. And then I wanted to also have, say, the traffic um, using Mel bands going continue or going with amp slice. Hello, yeah. So that's sort of an interesting reactive thing that's happening there. And you see the traffic sounds are kind of following the pitch a little bit. Um, you can hear it more clearly if I sort of banged out regularly like this. Da, da. Or uh, maybe we can combine the, there's a whole bunch of different amp slices all turned on. See what happens. Yeah, so now we have the stream going on in the background all the time. And with every word I say, it kind of goes nuts. Um, I'll need to add a reset button to turn them all off automatically. Let me turn that off. Um, yeah, so that's that's basically it. If you want to do it with a sound file, you can click sound file there, click that to open and you can play and loop it and it will monitor the input there as well. Um, there are, there's amplification. So if you, if I wanted to have my uh, voice just come through and be amplified through the patch, you can mix it in there. Resonant filter, um, 
uh, is best used with a, a very pitched input because what it does is it kind of boosts the frequencies at the unison and octave of your input uh, and kind of um, f yeah filters them filters out everything else um, and and follows those pitches and so it sort of creates the illusion of the sound being more pitched than than the pitches that are just available in the um, in the original sound files, and then the cross synth does a, a cross synthesis between your input and the um, the combined output of all the different park voices, stream traffic, waves, woods outputs. Um, so again, it's it's a way of sort of um, uh, making the um, the the soundscape sound a little bit more like whatever the input is by by adding a cross synthesis there. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, enjoy, and I will be continuing to update this periodically, I hope.